This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. For God is good all the time because that is God's nature. Good day. My name is Reverend Deborah Murray and I invite you to worship with us as we praise God and grow for God's glory.
please join me in the call to worship. Rejoice! God's love is poured out for you. How awesome is God who showers us with love. This is a day of celebration. Let us celebrate God's mighty healing love. It is time to worship. We are ready. Let us worship God. Good morning. I have a special message for the children watching today. Today, we celebrate fathers. It's Father's Day. And we celebrate our dads in the ways that they love and care for us. I want you to think of your dad or another man in your life, maybe a grandfather, an uncle, a special friend, or a godparent. Think of that person and see if you can answer these questions about him. What is his favorite color? What is his favorite food? What time did he wake up this morning? What did he dream about last night? What is he thinking about right now? Well, these questions have gotten harder, haven't they? And here's one last one. How many hairs does he have on his head? It's about impossible to know, right? But for some men, the answer would be easy. Zero. None. Today in our gospel lesson, Jesus talks about the hairs on our head. I have the Bibles we use in our Sunday school class, the Deep Blue Bible, and I want to read to you from the Gospel of Matthew. And I want you to hear these words that Jesus shared. Aren't two sparrows sold for a small coin? But not one of them will fall to the ground without your father knowing about it already. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Did you hear that line? Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Isn't that amazing? We may not know how many hairs we have or the people around us have, but God knows. God created us and God loves us so much, even more than the birds in the air, that God knows how many hairs are on our head. You are loved. You are loved by the people that surround you here in your life, in your home, at school, in this church. And even more so, you are loved by God. God, our Father in heaven, loves you completely, even down to the very last hair on your head. So will you say a prayer with me? We can keep our eyes open this morning and just talk out loud to God. Will you repeat after me? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for creating me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, God. Amen. I want to invite you now to give your financial gifts to First United Methodist Church in Palo Alto. We want you to be a part of our ministry. And our ministry is open and thriving and making a difference in people's lives. Our church is not closed. Our church is open and active, and we want you to be a part. And we thank you for being a part by giving your financial tithes and offerings this morning. You can give them online. You can download the Ministry One app on your cell phone, or you can mail a check to the church. We invite you to give. And in that spirit of giving, now let us pray and ask God's blessing on these gifts. Let us pray. Wondrous God of the universe, who finds time to whisper your love to us, we come today with grateful hearts. When you speak your love into our quiet moments, it is the most precious gift of all. It is not a gift for us to hold or hide, but to proclaim from the housetops. May the gifts we offer to you this morning proclaim your love loudly to a world that often feels forgotten. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Father, be with the fathers as I call you Father, they squirm because their experience with their fathers have been of neglect or abuse. Lord, have mercy upon the father and the child. We pray for their healing today. Father, be with the father who is sad to hear the name father because they never met their father. They were called a mistake and their father wanted nothing to do with them. Lord, have mercy upon them, the father and the child. We pray for their healing today. Father, be with the child who cries when they hear the word father as they mourn daddies who will never come home from a jog, a trip to the market, or due to the murder on domestic or foreign soil. Lord, have mercy upon the fathers, family, and community. We pray for their healing today. Father, be with the fathers who lament the death of a son and lament them being taken away from this world too soon. Lord, have mercy upon the father and the community who lost this child. We pray for their healing today. Be with fathers who hold regret for the father-son relationship they never had. They never had a loving dad and cannot give what they do not have. Lord, have mercy upon the father and the child. We pray for their healing today. And Father, be with babies that don't have fathers to sing to them. Fill that empty space with lyrics of love from others. Father, be with children in areas that are unsafe. Shield them from violence and protect them from fear. Father, be with those who point guns and plant bombs and remind them that they are loved and show them a different way. Father, be with the hard workers who are without meaningful work. Hold them steady until you surprise them with something new. Father, be with artists called to make the ordinary sublime and inspire them so that they might inspire us. Father, be with seekers and cynics and skeptics silently wondering about the meaning of life. Answer their honest questions and give them people who will give them answers. Father, be with those whose bodies are sick and struggling, quiet and in pain, and heal them of all that hurts them. Be with those, Father, who are on their last leg of this journey and remind them that you hold the keys to eternal life. Father, be with those who hoped life might look differently Strengthen them and hold them. Catch their tears and infuse them with hope. Oh God, Father, be with those who cannot protect their children from hunger or crime or stereotypes. Father, be with men who want desperately to be fathers but are not. And be with those who are fathers but act as if they are not. And be with any and all who experience this day as joyful. You make us for your relationship, O oh God, and you know how fragile and tricky this can be. So into our places in, of petition and need, into our places of questions and pain, speak your words of truth and grace. And where words will never be enough, sit with us in the silence and wait with us while we watch for life to creep upon us once again. We make all these prayers trusting in you, Holy God, Father and Mother of us all, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, using the words that Jesus taught us to say, praying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. 
It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house feasible, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. But I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foe will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow, follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. May God add blessing to this reading. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for death and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear. I'm resting on. His goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. Though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song is placed to sign, when hope within I know he watches me. I see him.
Good morning. My name is Tim Crockett. Pastor Deborah asked me to provide a reflection on fatherhood, to celebrate the fathers and the father figures in our life. Please join me in a prayer of preparation. Dear Lord, bless all the fathers in the world, whether they are biological fathers or not, who have accepted the responsibilities of being a parent. Guide them to be outstanding role models to their children. Let them, let, let them look to your example and to parent with patience, unconditional love, and understanding. Amen. This is truly a Father's Day like none other. Typically, my family would be attending our United Methodist Family Camp right now, but because of the pandemic, it was moved to a virtual version like much of our lives these days. Camp typically started or ended on Father's Day. However, up until a few years ago, our family noticed that barely a mention was made of Father's Day while at camp. It never really bothered me, but it got me to thinking about why is it that we don't always lift up fatherhood, even when given a chance. When you think of fathers, generally, do you immediately think of dad jokes or really unfortunate fashion choices? You know. The dad wearing high white socks with plaid shorts and white t-shirt while telling a joke like, hey, I'm reading a book of, about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. Now close your eyes for a moment and envision what a, what a good father looks like. If you're fortunate, you are thinking of your own father. Unfortunately, too many people don't envision their own father because their father ser either served as a negative influence or wasn't really around at all. Popular culture often portrays fathers as strong, silent types who provide for their family, but are hopelessly inept when it comes to nurturing or domestic roles. Or they simply show fathers as mean and abusive, or not there at all. Those portrayals may simply be a reflection of the world in which we live. I don't know. But in any event, a society that limits the definition of fatherhood to silent or mean or inept around the house or just not there, does a disservice to fathers and their families. It's similar to suggesting women should be limited to domestic duties and shouldn't be given the same opportunities as men to pursue their dreams without regard to their gender. I'm gonna suggest that both men and society need to take a more expansive view of the roles of fathers and to celebrate those roles, roles in whatever form they take. Research tells us the kids who grow up with a present engaged dad are less likely to drop out of school or wind up in jail compared to children with absent fathers and, and no other male caregivers or role models. When kids have strong relationships with father figures, they're less likely to have sex at a young age and tend to avoid other high-risk behaviors. They're more likely to have high-paying jobs and healthy, stable relationships when they grow up. They also tend to have higher IQ scores even by the age of three and endure fewer psychological problems throughout their lives when fatherhood is taken seriously. Bottom line is this, when a caring father or father figure is present in a child's life, that child benefits greatly. Before my wife and I had kids, I thought about what kind of dad I wanted to be. Of course, I looked to my own parents as a guide. Whether we are intentional about it or not, people often base their parenting styles on what was modeled for them by their own parents. Sometimes that doesn't work out so well. In my case, I tried to adopt the qualities I most admired in my father and mother, while avoiding some qualities I didn't like as much, and combine those elements with the adult I had become, and then pray it would work out. I grew up in a middle-class household with a father who was a police officer and a mother who stayed at home, with two older brothers, an older sister, and me. My father was a tough man. He didn't talk a lot, but when he did, you listened. He was clear on his expectations of his family, and you didn't want to disappoint him. He was a man of his word. If he said he'd do something, you could count on him to do it. If he told you something, you knew it was the truth. He both provided for his family and protected us. However, I don't remember my father ever telling me he loved me. I don't think I ever hugged my father. I don't remember ever having a deep, meaningful discussion with my father until perhaps we were adults. In fact, in many ways, I never really knew my father. Nonetheless, my siblings and I never doubted he loved us, and we loved him. Put simply, my father did the best he could with the upbringing he had and society's expectations of how fathers should behave. 
Now he grew up in, a, in profound poverty in a Pennsylvania coal mining town with a mean drunk father that was the antithesis of good parenting. Thankfully, my father had a mother that he adored. I suspect my father did as I endeavored to do, take the best of his mother's qualities, try to find anything worthwhile from his father, and discard the rest of his father's influence and then carry it forward. Unfortunately, that approach could only take him so far. When our first daughter was born, my wife and I decided to take leaves from our jobs at separate times to take care of our newborn. Hope. Vicki took her leave first. Once my leave was done, we decided I should try to go back to my job as a probation officer part-time to allow me additional time to continue caring for our newborn. Unfortunately, my office couldn't imagine how being a probation officer could be done part-time, and I suspect didn't believe me when I told them I'd have to resign if going part-time wasn't an option. But that's what I did. Our family was fortunate. My wife's job paid enough that we could afford for me to stay home with our child. Many families don't have that option. Plus, we both valued growing up in families where our parents stayed home. Just happened to be our mothers. So I left my job and dove headfirst into a version of fatherhood I had no blueprint for. I was fortunate that my wife was a full parenting partner. Despite her demanding job and travel schedule, she always found ways to be fully engaged, a fully engaged parent. So I already had a head start over many stay-at-home parents. Interestingly, many of my female colleagues from the probation department applauded my decision to leave and stay home with my daughter. And, and even more interesting, many of my male colleagues did as well. However, my male colleagues acknowledged that even putting aside the financial issues, there was no societal permission for a man to stay at home with their children. What had I gotten myself into? Through the years as my daughter grew and then our youngest, younger daughter Faith was born, I found my version of fatherhood was both celebrated and questioned. There were no other fathers I encountered who were similarly situated. Oh, I came across the random father who took a short paternity leave to stay at home, but it was never a long-term plan. It was never the plan. In, in the intervening years, I've heard of other fathers staying home full time, but it is still incredibly rare. The stay-at-home mothers I encountered tended to fall into one of two camps. The larger camp didn't know what to make of me and viewed me with some suspicion. It was as if I was treading on hallowed ground by staying at home with my kids. Plus, there's the very real issue of men always being a potential physical threat to women. Add in the, pro pro add, add in the protective nature most parents feel toward their children, and I could understand many moms' wariness of me when I showed up at a park, ballet lessons, or a birthday party. I didn't take it personally, but it was isolating at times. Thankfully, there was a smaller group of moms who embraced my presence and welcomed my children into many activities with their children. Believe me, I know I wasn't invited to dinner for mom's night out, and they were never going to bring me fully into the mom fold, but they included me to the extent it allowed my children to engage with other kids, and in the end, my presence didn't hurt my daughter's development. That's all I really cared about. Oddly, almost all the moms would give me disproportionate credit for doing the things women have done for generations. Literally, if I competently fed, clothed, changed a diaper, or even, heck, just kept my kids alive, I was applauded. In fact, I was given the nickname of St. Tim. No, it wasn't deserved but it suggested how unusual my version of fatherhood was received. However, the flip side was that I went to when I went to dinner parties with other parents, the dads had no idea what to do, what to do with me, what to talk to, with me about, and had no interest in including me in their conversations. There's a number of possible reasons why that happened, but again, it was isolating. Now, it, but it did give me some insight into what it must be like for women being excluded from those same conversations all the time. As you can see, my version of fatherhood was anything but typical. I tried to always love my kids unconditionally, be a man of my word, and always be honest with them. I wanted to make sure they could count on me. I also took my mother's loving spirit and fondness for laughter in everything I do. I wanted to be their parent first and their friend second. Unfortunately, I also yelled a lot when the kids were little. I rarely tell my children I love them, 
and I'm not always comfortable talking about deeply vulnerable subjects with really my kids or anyone. I don't ever want to appear weak. I don't say that with pride. That's just the truth. I try to show my daughters every day that I love them, and I know in my heart that there are no more important people in this world than my two daughters and my wife. However, even with the highly unusual experience I've had as a father and awareness of the pitfalls of parenting, I still only have a limited view of what a father can look like. And so does society. And in particular, men themselves need to step up. And my work as both a child abuse and neglect investigator in New York City and a child support enforcement worker here in California, I've encountered too many men who view parenting as women's work, or they simply can't be bothered with having to take care of their children, or even support them financially. Unfortunately, this view isn't confined um, to my experiences at work. Many men I encounter and chat with every day talk about how they help around the house or babysit the kids as if they're doing some great favor for the children's mom, but ultimately view the work of raising children as primarily the mom's domain. Men need to understand their kids need them in their lives, not just for financial support, but also for emotional support, nurturing, etc. So if you're not the biological dad, but can forge a meaningful bond with a child when their own father is not fully present, do it if possible, assuming the mom is on board with it. Kids need fathers and father figures in their life. Our church has lived in that expansive view of fatherhood. Vicki and I raised our children in this church. We often said it was like having multiple grandparents, aunts, uncles. Both men and women stepped up repeatedly to help out in whatever ways were needed. No one asked whether the support should be given by a man or a woman. The support was given because it was needed. When our family faced challenges, it was members of this church who supported us most. Your display of Christian love had a tremendously positive impact in raising our children. I tried to follow that model of Christian love in my parenting. That broad community of support you gave, which is needed for all children to thrive, is part of the expansive view of parenting and fatherhood that we celebrate today. Now, if you wonder whether people can move to this more expansive view of fatherhood, let me relay a short conversation between my wife and older daughter way back when she was in preschool. One day, Vicki was talking to Hope and mentioned that a particular father might work outside the home in a job like she had. Hope looked up with a bemused expression and said, That's sillies. That's silly. Daddies don't go to work. She has since learned that some daddies do indeed go to work. So it is possible, though, that people can expand their definition of fatherhood. So on this Father's Day, let's embrace fatherhood in all its forms, whether a father is a biological dad, a grandfather, brother, uncle, or close family friend, whether a father goes to work each morning or drives the soccer carpool, or whatever, let's celebrate them. However they positively contribute to, to the raising of their children, let's celebrate them. Let's tell men that there is no greater calling than being a supportive and loving influence in their children's life, and mean it. Let's tell men that treating their children's mom with respect and dignity will model what it means to be a good dad. Let's tell men that being there for their kids is a value to be upheld. Let's tell dads they matter, even if they're wearing white socks and plaid shorts with a corny one-liner at the ready. Happy Father's Day. As we prepare to sing our last hymn of the day, I'd like to again invite you to participate in choosing hymns for the future weeks. During July and August, we have favorite hymn sing. So please go online to submit your hymns, and we'll look forward to those days. Thank you.
of hope and God's love toward one another and God's glory. Go now, knowing that God's peace is with you. Amen. <laughs>